Hello class, and welcome to Electrical 101. I'll be your professor, Kevin Bergeron. So grab out your pens and pencils, and open up your textbooks to page 101. Haha! <laughs> hey everybody, how you guys doing? So anyway, I figured I would do the electrical video, and I wanted you guys to see this. So you guys see this plethora of stuff here? Looks pretty intimidating, I must say. And electrical, for some people, are, is extremely scary. Alright? So, I'm going to be talking to you guys tonight about electrical. And we're going to be working on the um, the TS-125. I'm going to show you guys a cool tool. And uh, we're going to just get into it. Okay? So, but before I do, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. So, when I post a video, you, my student, will get the first notification when I get it. So as you can see there is a plethora of stuff here. I just I just grabbed a whole bunch of it and just threw it into a pile. You have your multimeters, craftsman, harbor freight, Walmart, and of course radio shack. Notice how there is no fluke up there. Do you want to know why? Because a fluke meter is extremely expensive. And this meter right here it's going to fall on the floor. This one's going to fall on the floor. This one's going to fall on the floor. And this one's going to fall on the floor. Now, typically, you're like, oh, Kevin, why would you do that to your equipment? They're all encased. It's fine. They're not going to be broken. All right? But if I'm going to drop a meter on the floor, it's not going to be an expensive one. So, same thing with test lights. You have your couple of dollar test light over at Walmart, Harbor Freight, anywhere you go you'll find one of these cheapies and these are all you honestly need. You don't need to spend more than, this is $4, about $3.99, 4 bucks. Then you can go up to a KD Tool one, this is like 10 bucks, and it has a little dinky little light on it but it's a little bit more heavy duty. And then of course you've got your, I think it's like uh, 60, 70 bucks um, snap on one right here with a voltmeter built right into it, okay? Um, so, it's pretty cool to saw. I'm gonna show you guys how it all works anyway. And then, of course, you have your um, diagnostics right here for finding shorts. Now, I do this stuff professionally, okay? And so, it makes sense for me to buy a machine like this right here so I can take um, this socket right here. I'm gonna show you how this works, okay? And then I go over to the bike. Now here's the side right here that we're having the issue with. So I undo the bulb. I take the bulb out. And I plug in this probe. Okay. And it fits right into the socket. I plug it in. I need two hands for this. Hold on one second. Alright, well I'm having an issue putting it into the socket. But anyway, this right here fits into the socket and it's supposed to twist. And that right there replicates the light bulb. Okay. And then I hook up my machine, which I can still use it like that. I hook up my machine, this piece right here, and this right here is the transmitter. So I plug this green terminal right here in to either one of these or into that single filament one. And it'll it'll put a, a tone in that wire. And they'll put a tone in that wire and then I can use this machine right here. And I run it along the wire, which I'm sure you've seen these on TV and stuff. You basically just run it along the wire, boom, 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 and the audio will cut out, and then I can find my short. So this is a fast way of doing it, but you don't need anything like this. You can do it all with a multimeter, one of these. And the setting you're going to use is just the, con um, the continuity one. So I'm going to get you guys in the stand, and we're going to do some a little bit of uh, show and tell, and show you guys a little couple of cool tricks and tips and understanding on electrical. I'm going to show you guys a cool tool that I use on my regular motorcycles. This is for the 12 volt guys, not for the 6 volt guys. So if you have a 12 volt battery, you can get one of these. This is made by Mac and this is a continuity, a conductance tester. Sorry, conductance. And you hook this onto your battery. And this is going to tell me what the voltage is. Look at this plastic. I actually try to leave that on there, but you can see the voltage. And you click on enter. And tells you this is a um, liquid fill battery. Okay. So you're going to click yes. It does AGM and everything. Cold cranking amps. And then you can go up 
or down, depending upon what you want, but it's a 230 amp. And you click it. It's testing the battery. And it's telling me my battery is good. And it's reading a 314 cold crank amp. So this is how I test my batteries. And of course you compare it to the cold cranking amps on the battery. And there you go. I always like to make sure, because I use this battery for testing because of the terminals this guy. So this is my 12 volt test battery. And I'm going to show you guys some cool stuff with it tonight. Alright. I'm getting ready to do an engine tear down right there on a KE1 uh, KE100, but I'm not doing that tonight. Another video. So I'm going to show you guys some test lights. Okay, this test light right here. When you guys hear what I'm about to tell you, is you're going to love this. Okay, I don't know if these work. It's been a while since I used them, but um, this test light worked good. It lights up. You see that, guys? Okay, that's it. Only has one job to do, is to light up. Okay, so balance that up there. All right, its only job is to light up. Now I want to show you guys something. Okay, this is a three dollar or four dollar test light. Okay, this is about six between sixty and eighty bucks. So tell me what the voltage is, but we don't care about that. Okay, it lights up. Okay, it does the exact same thing. You don't need an expensive test light to do what I'm doing is my point. Okay, you can do the same job that this can do with one of these. The voltage on here, that's just an added bonus. Okay, and this, this one here is cool. I mean, yeah, because you can put it on here and I can tell if I'm, now it lights up green. And I can tell if I'm doing a ground circuit. Or a positive circuit because it changes colors depending upon if it's testing a ground or a uh, a positive. But that's okay. We don't need to know that because we can do that all with a multimeter. A Harbor Freight one. Five bucks or you can get them for free if you buy a tool. Pretty neat. Okay. So right now I have the, uh, the tone thing set up there so I can uh, show it to you. Alright. the My power probe. So I got a wire right here. We're going to test this wire. We're going to test it for a short. So I'm going to take my probe. I got this one hooked on and I can pinch it right onto a wire. It has different adapters so you can back feed it. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. Back feed it to a sensor or a, a, a wire. You don't have to do it this way. I'm just doing it this way for ease of the video. Okay. So what you do. Plug this in. It's on right now. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handy dandy little wand. I set it to low on the lower side. And now I can just take this right here. And you can see how it's got the tone all the way through the wire. Okay, that wire is good. If you move it away from it, it will beep, uh, beep out. So you got to make it close. All right. So I know that wire is good. But let's say we have a shorted wire. Okay, let's take a look and see what that does. So this is a wire. I made a wire with an obvious short in it. Okay. For the purpose of this video. So it's got a broken wire, which is what we're experiencing on this bike. So I'm going to plug this in. Okay, now I can go down it. See if you can make sure you see me. I got nothing. Dead as a doornail. That wire is dead. Good here. Dead here. So now I can open up the wiring harness and fix that particular short. Alright. So let's take a look at that now. Now, we're going to do the same thing without this tool. So now let me show you guys how to do it with a multimeter. I'm going to use the cheapest multimeter I can possibly use, and it's this one right here. You ain't getting any cheaper than this right here. This is so cheap that they actually will give you one of these for free if you buy something. And you remember you get the coupon and all that. So, um, guys, Harbor Freight will give you one of these as a gift if you buy something from Harbor Freight. I have a bunch of these. These things are awesome. What's nice about these is they're strong. 
okay? They last, okay? I don't care if it's accurate. It doesn't have to be dead on. It's got to be in the ballpark, right? So I have it set to common ground, and I don't care if I break this or not. Honestly, I've got a bunch of them, all right? But I like them because you can keep these in your go box of your car, on your motorcycle, anywhere. You need one. You know what I mean? They're cheap. Who cares? I'm going down to the diode setting. Okay, there's a picture of a diode. Okay, that is the conduct uh, the continuity setting. So when I touch the two ends of the term, let's see if I can make it so you guys can see what I'm doing here. There's no little stand on these cheap thing. <laughs> we'll use my other tool to hold that up. How's that? Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Yeah, you can. Okay, good. I'm going to take my two ends, and when I touch these, I should get a reading. Look at that. Okay, and then go back to one. So now I'm going to take the good wire that I made. I'm going to put one on one end. I'm going to touch the other end. I got a reading. I'm good. This wire is connected. Anything under 5 ohms is good. Alright, let's go. Uh, now we're going to take the shorted wire. See? I used a very expensive tool to find the short. Now I'm going to use... A smaller one. Okay, so now I'm gonna go like this and I will touch it to this end. And look, no reading at all. Okay. So what can I do? I suspect the wire is broken someplace. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my bike. Alright, let's take you over to the bike. Okay, so I have a broken wire and I need to check and see where it could possibly be so let me give you guys a little bit of hints on this all right you're a detective you are looking for clues you'll you have questions that need answering and i'm going to help you with those all right so the first thing i'm going to look at is what circuit is it is it a light circuit yes okay so in this case it's a light circuit but it could be ignition it could be a headlight it could be anything but let's start with the let's start with the problem with this bike is the electrical Okay, for the back. So now I'm looking at the seat. I'm looking at where it hinges. I'm looking is is it pinched where these two plastics? Is it pinched between the two plastics where the two plastics go together? Um, did the wiring get caught up in the lock? Did something happen where the seat was actually squished? The terminals. Is there corrosion on any of these? Um, I see some rust. Is my ground wire rotted off? Those type of things you want to look at first. A visual inspection. When we first got this bike here, one of my first visual inspections was this red wire tie. A uh, zip um, butt connector. Okay. And then you have another wire somewhere in here that I, I mean, this is just awful. You know, this is legit awful. There's a wire in there, guys, and all that electrical tape. So we have no idea. So when we turned on the wire, on the lights, the light didn't come on because it's got all this type of problem with it. So I could take that, pro that um, the 3000 power probe, I can probe that light fixture right there, run that wand up there and find the light, or I can use the multimeter. So you're probably saying to yourself, Kevin, where would you hook the multimeter up to? All right, so what I would do is I would go from the light fixture itself, and I would go all the way up to where the flasher is because that's where that hot wire is. The ground wire is easy. I'll, I'll get into that in a second. You want to get to the source of the power. Okay, it all, everything goes through the flasher. So I know that when I turn the switch on for that side, it's going to run through the flasher. And then I can, I can power probe it that way. Or I can go from the back to the front light as well. Filament bulb to filament bulb. So, let's get into all that. If I'm going too fast for you guys, just like I said, stop, rewind, go back. Um, electrical sounds more complicated than it actually is. It's intimidating because there's a whole bunch of colored wires, and you don't know where any of them go. And then you go look at a schematic, and then you got lines and drawings. But I'm trying to kind of make it a little bit more simple for you. So, let me go try another one. 
Okay, so get your pen ready, okay? We're gonna draw a light bulb. Okay, there's your light bulb. That's not a pen. That's a pen. All right, take my crayons. I was coloring, I had my helmet on, everything was awful. All right, so anyway, there are two parts to a, head, uh, to a light. Any light bulb has two parts. It has a negative and a positive. So the negative is the case. So let me show you guys that. The outer part right here is the ground. That's your ground. That centerpiece is your positive. Okay. Now you're going to have this right here going to ground. You probably saw that symbol before. That is a ground symbol. That means that the wire goes to the ground. All you have to do is go from that socket to the, the frame of the machine and you'll get a reading. And then this one right here goes up to a power source. A power source. So basically, let's, let's do this this way. Let's draw a battery. Positive, negative. And this can go up to the positive. And this light right here is going to be lit. All right, let's simulate that. Okay, so now I'm going to take my negative and I'm going to hook it onto the battery. The battery should illuminate, but it's not. So, all right, looks like we need a bulb. First thing you do, take the bulb out. Oh, it's got all kinds of corrosion on it. Look at all that corrosion. Oh man, look at my socket. My socket is junk. Look how rusted that is. Oh my god. How do I fix that? Couple different ways to fix that socket. Okay. This is why I always say pull out the bottom screw to do your inspection. That's the bottom screw. That tells me that water has gotten in here. So I have a dim light, or no light. That, my friends, is why. So what can I do to fix my light, Kevin? Do I have to replace this whole socket? Nope, no you don't. You can literally take a cup, a big cup that this way here will fit into, take it off your bike, dismount it, unplug it. Fill the cup up with vinegar. Let it soak in vinegar for a while. Okay, then that'll all clean up. But we don't have time for that right now. So we're going to try to speed things up. Let's try something. Okay. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our light bulb. Right here, and we're going to take a piece of sandpaper. Alright, I'm going to inspect the filament in there first, make sure it's not blown. This one doesn't look blown at all, this one looks good. Alright, and now I'm going to take, I'm going to go to Walmart, or, or any place that has guns, and I'm going to get a shotgun wire brush. This is a brass one. I'm going to disconnect it because it's right here. will short out, if I don't, because this is hooked up directly to the battery. I'm going to put this into the light fixture right here. Then, I'm going to reinstall my bulb and see if it works. It may not work. It may work. The problem might be elsewhere. This one is still not working. So what do we do if it's still not working? Let's see if we can find out why. Perhaps we need a new bulb. So let's 
try a new bulb. Okay, so the new bulb fixed the problem. But at least I know the socket's good. Now let's put that other bulb back in for a minute. Plug that back in. I looked at this bulb and I thought the filament was good. Okay? It turns out the filament is not good. It is blown. Never trust your eye to look at that. And I'm going to tell you why. Because this filament inside the light bulb, you can't really see that all that well. Okay? But I'm going to draw a quick picture of what it looks like. What that is, is a very finely wound... coil okay it's a very finely 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 wound coil all right with that said any one of those can be broken and it's sitting in there so it's straight it, it's not going to fall but now we have a socket that actually works pretty good and with this working good guess what i want to show you something else now, now we have a test light. Basically, never assume, always test. And the other thing I want to show you guys is you can also, it's just a good one, real quick. Okay. Um, what was it going to do? Hold on one second. Having a brain fart tonight. Okay, the other thing you can do is use your multimeter. You can legit unplug the circuit, the light from the circuit, put it into the multimeter. Let's put this right in front of you. I'm going to take the two wires. I'll put one here. And touch one here. And then you see how you got a reading? We know that the light's good. Now watch this. If the light's bad. You won't get a reading. Well, how about if I showed it to you? You won't get a reading. Okay? So bad bulb, no reading. Good bulb, a reading. Well, hopefully, guys, that helped you with some of your diagnostics. Tomorrow night, we are going to be getting into troubleshooting. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm moving you all around here. We're going to get into working on and troubleshooting this electrical. So I wanted to show you guys some cool stuff, some quick tools. We're going to get into more of this stuff. Like I said, guys, you don't need Snap-on or Mac. You don't need you don't need these strippers right here for Mac tools. You can get away with these ones. Okay, real simple. So hopefully you guys find this video educational, informational. And however you want to take it, it's getting late. It's very dark out, very tired. So I just want to say um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I will talk to you guys later. I'm out!